Hey, how's it all going? I'm back. Uh, kind of. Um, still settling in here, and I'm actually getting over a, over a cold at the moment. I think my kid must have got something from from kindy. Anyway, this uh, this video is definitely overdue, as you can tell by. This uh, Facebook thread here, it's three weeks overdue. I said that I was going to do a video on, you know, just give me some ideas of, of videos uh, or questions for a, for a video. And um, so there's a few in here that I want to cover off. And I mean, some of them, well, actually, I forget what's in here, but there could be some in here that don't apply anymore because they were asked three weeks ago. <sighs> <coughs> Excuse me. So, uh, yeah, well, we'll just run through them. Uh, let's just get into it. So, Nighty has gone, uh, he'd appreciate a brief, uh, appreciate a brief on your perspective at the moment as, as a whole. Uh, maybe it's a bit too broad, but what do you expect the market to do at the moment? What action do you see to play out before you think it's time to re-enter for bull season? Um... What are my indicators for long-term reversals and a lot of other stuff? Now, things have changed remarkably in the last three weeks because, um, you know, the war has started. Um, the Ukrainian, uh, the Russian invasion in Ukraine. So um, things have, uh, you know, there's a spanner in the works, definitely. So... Uh, the oil trade that I spoke about, gee, this Luna looks all right, actually. Look at that. Also, it kind of looks like an inverse head and shoulders almost, but that candle here, while we're looking at it, that hammer, that could shoot off. Anyway, keep an eye on that, incidentally. That's good. There's a lot, of, a lot of really good fundamental stuff around Luna at the moment, just with all the hype with that bet. So there's a bet going on at 88 bucks, so which is basically where we are now. So this is the 88 dollar line. Uh, so in 12 months from in or 12 months from a week ago, probably. Um, you got Duquan, which is the guy that. Um, runs Luna and then uh, another just a crypto trader guy um, on crypto Twitter had a million dollar bet each way you know price will be above 88 bucks or below 88 bucks and then some other guy comes in uh, I want to throw in 10 million so now I think the total bet is like 22 million anyway so yeah it'll be it'll be interesting It'll be interesting. You know, you could kind of argue that maybe there's now an $88 floor on Luna. Maybe not so much now, but definitely in 12 months' time. So in 12 months' time, which is all the way here, if price is sort of like here, then, you know, what, is, what does Duquan do? Does he just, like, buy up a whole heap of um, Luna just so he can win the bet? Because he... He has said that he wants to just he doesn't care about the money and he's prepared to give it to charity. So um, it'll be interesting. Um, anyway, that wasn't the that wasn't what I was going to talk about. I was going to talk about oil, 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 oil. Uh, which oil do I usually look at? Um, ah, can't even spell. So, whoa, okay. So, oh, I haven't looked at this in a while. But I did mention oil, um, and I said that we should get it to at least 110. So I'll remove all this stuff. Um, which is sort of like the, you know, the resistance over here. And we punched all the way through that to 130. Um uh yeah so it's it's come all the way back down and now it's sort of it's bounced on this week and then you know it might shoot off or something but there's definitely an indecision confusion and why wouldn't there be because there's a war going on right but generally you know the longer these wars go on we've seen it before in the past that oil's 
just going to keep going up because the demand goes up. You know, the war machine needs oil for, you know, um, you know just fuel for jets or aircraft carriers, and tanks and things, and then lubricants and, you know, manufacturing and all the other stuff, right? Um, so, uh, and then you've got supply being cut off because of the war for whatever reason could be sanctions or it could be you know physical it's been cut off or pipes get destroyed like we saw that in the middle east uh so supply goes down demand is still the same slightly higher because you've got countries now trying to arm themselves even more than they already are so it's always a safe bet with oil that you know more often than not it's going to go up when a war actually starts um yeah so as far as the question's concerned which is um a perspective at the moment as to what the market's going to do everything is so fluid with the war um because you don't know what um yeah i totally lost this trade you don't know what putin's going to do right um so but the Fed did come out and say that they're going to start raising rates because they finally admitted that there's inflation, right? Oh, no, inflation's just transitory. Yeah, okay, whatever. Like, you can't just print more money than you ever have in the entire existence of money and then not expect there to be inflation. Like, um, So they've raised the rates by 25 basis points and everybody's happy. Well, the stock market's happy. Um, so they're trying to do something about it. They're trying to conv- they're curving inflation. So um, as long as the stock market is happy, which it seems to be at the moment, then that means that the crypto market is going to be happy, um, which kind of sucks because you want you want the crypto market and the stock market to be separate, but they're not. Um, they're aligned. And it's sort of what we were... Like back in 2017, everyone was talking about, you know, it's going to be better when the big boys come and there's going to be lots of money pumped in and we're going to go to the moon. But the big boys are here and everything's correlated to what they want it to do on the stock market with Bitcoin mainly because, you know, that's the biggest liquid market and there are rules that stop big players from entering crypto for regulations and whatever else is going on over there. Um, But because a lot of the crypto stuff is just mirrors what Bitcoin does, then it's basically affecting everything, right? Um, So I think as far as the question, which is, and this is just my opinion, and I'm definitely not an economist. Um, So, you know, take my opinion with, everybody else's opinion and make up your own mind but how do I see it playing out everything is still too knife edgy mainly because of the war because we don't know what's going to happen what's the next what's the next chess move that the Ukrainians are going to do and NATO is going to do and Putin's going to do um at least we know what the Fed's going to do. So they're actually raising rates. Um, I don't think that there's anything that's going to completely tank us for the time being. Um, I think we're just going to sort of meander around here. But I'll tell you what, if we make it back to here on the stock market like, and it sort of pokes its head up, Jesus. Um, that's something I wouldn't have wouldn't have expected, hey, because you're in war and and then everybody's like they're raising interest rates, but then they're also printing more money at the same time. Like I, I can't wrap my head around that, but it must be something to do with the war. But it, I think um, some of that noise is. You know, the macro landscape better than I do is Kyle. Um, so, and he's in he's in my group and he runs Crypto Paradox. So <clears throat> he explains it better than I do. Um, I might actually ask him. But 
Um, yeah. But it's not all death and gloom, that's for sure. So, I mean, things are still here. Like, not like that. I mean, this is, this is okay. I mean, look at this. Like, this is choppy and this is sideways. And Bitcoin really hasn't done anything in a year. But it's creating higher lows, which is good. That's good, right? We're heading in the right direction. It's just not as fast as most people want it to be, right? They just want they want their Lambos now, and that's it. I think the the good thing to consider, to remember, not consider, well, both, is that there are some sectors in this market that are still performing well. And if you went around in 2017, like I was, and a little bit before, when it was a bear market, everything was dead. Uh, and people just left and went away, right? Um, but now we've got NFTs, and we've got, you know, Metaverse, and we've got gaming, and uh, we've got DeFi, and they're all chugging along doing their own thing. Um, so there's always opportunities to make some money, um, even if it's just, you know, farming some shit governance token, you can still make some cash. Whereas before everything was just tanking to the floor and it didn't matter what it was. So all the coins that are tanking to the floor now really don't do anything. Um... And they're reminiscent of what you would get back in 2017. But then you've got, you know, things that have utility and you can do stuff. Or even if it's something as simple as a lending protocol allows you to lend it out. So people have a reason to hold on to it for the time being. You know, before in 2017, if nobody was buying your coin, it was just going down in value, right? And it was just useless and it was dead weight. But now... You have options, right? And even if you don't like any of this stuff, you can just go and buy, you know, NFTs and flip those. So, you know, and the amount of building that's going on across all these chains, you know, there's way more chains, way more activity, way more builders. Um, just need to hold on and stick in, stick in there, right? This COVID and Russian invasion of Ukraine stuff and um, high inflation and it's putting a cloud over all of the good stuff that's happening in crypto um, so it's still a long game and you know we will get there it just there are more pressing issues at the moment which once they're removed, it's sort of like taking the pressure valve off. I think that that will be what I think will happen. Right? I just don't know when, they, when it's going to go away. Right? War is so unpredictable, and there's COVID and diseases. They're so unpredictable, and um. So hopefully, I answered your question. Let's continue on. Uh, congrats. Nothing. Okay. Tim, something about the golden cross and those sorts of traditional indicators and whether this long-term cycle was predictable based on previous bull markets. No, it wasn't. Previous bull markets in Bitcoin, crypto land, and this one, way different. Um, uh, based on your previous bull markets, might be interesting given your TA. Maybe also look for the long-term bottom. Um, the long-term bottom. Okay, so traditionally the long-term bottom on, I'll just get rid of all this. So let's look at the previous bull market, it went up and then had a, you know, people would call it a blow off top. Actually, let's use the, here we go, choose this one. This is the Brave New Coin Liquid Index and it's the one that has the most history and it goes all the way back to 2010. Wow, cool. Yeah, so here's the, <laughs> check out the size of this, right? So here is, this is the first one where we get to a thousand US dollars and then there's the most recent one in 2017 and then the one we're in now. 
So let's go a log. Uh, so we won't do that one. So here it went down, then pump, then up, then pump, then up, then pump. So you see they're like sort of uh, scoopies, like they come down and scoop and go up. And then we get to here, and it's sort of like then we had the massive crash, and then we had the COVID dump, and then we pumped, and then we double topped, right? So this is not the same, even just looking at the candles. Um, this pump here was driven mainly by COVID, the COVID recovery, and then printing of the money, uh, and then we top out. And then we pump again, and then we top out. Um, a lot of, like, some of this stuff, some of these impulses were Elon-related too. Um, like, I think in here was when he said that, you know, Bitcoin's great and Dodge is great and everybody's all all over it. And then, like, Dodge pumps in and about here. And then he, this is where he says, I think Bitcoin mining is wasteful or something. And then it initiates a dump off, and then we're back. But... Back to the question. So the question was uh, long term, long term bottoms, right? So long term bottoms. If you look at just nice and simple, uh, these lines. If you don't know, that's the Bollinger's, uh, the blue line, the like the cyan line. That's the the middle of the Bollinger's. This blue line here is the um, uh, the fifty EMA, and this purple line is the two hundred EMA. Um, you'll see that every time prices hit the 200 EMA, like it hasn't gone below it like ever. Here it has, this is the EMA, but if you chuck on the 200 simple moving average, it just bounces um, along the bottom here. So for a long term, so from a long term perspective, the, um, the 200 EMA is king for crypto anyway. Um, it works in traditional stuff too, but it's excellent in crypto. Uh, if price ever came back to here, which is like 25, 26,000, you would buy the absolute shit out of it if you had the money. Um, if you didn't, just go long. Um, historically, if it ever touches there, it gets bought up crazy. Look here, volume, heaps of volume back down here. Crazy amounts of volume the first time it hit, and then not so much because everybody just like bought the shit out of it here, then ran out of money. Um, same with here. So cracks the 200, gets bought up huge, and then sort of dies off here, bought up, fucking died off. So if it ever touches here, just buy it up. Don't think about it, and then put it away. The Golden Crosses, that was the other part of the question, wasn't it? Something about the golden cross and the source of attrition in traditional indicators uh, that was predictable based on previous markets. <sighs> um, the pie cycle indicator, which is one that's not a traditional indicator, but that has worked well. As far as traditional indicators go, the golden cross thing is probably too laggy. It wouldn't have picked the top for you, um, but it's definitely uh, a trend change thing. But there's no golden crosses on the high time frames for Bitcoin. Um, there are some some here. So like here's the 5200. By the time it crossed, price is already here. But we dumped from way up there. Like and here's where it crosses back up bullish. And the bottom was way down here. So I mean you could have entered here and just held you'd be in a loss and then you'd eventually go up. So I mean See how this here is just sideways. Um, EMA EMA indicator related stuff doesn't work in a sideways market. It works great in a trending market. That's what they're designed for. Um, sideways markets is is terrible. It's been a sideways market for the last twelve months, maybe more. So intraday it's gone you know up and then down but overall if you're looking at daily and the weekly it's just been sideways um yeah so long-term bottom is the 200 
SMA. Moving on a nightmare, yes it is. Uh, can you do a hindsight recap of the warning signs that the market gave before the huge pump to 65? Uh, as well as the most recent SAP that started this downtrend. Uh, what hindsight recap of the warning signs that the market gave before the huge pump? The warning signs. Oh, the, oh so you want to know the bullish warning signs for the huge pump to 65, which was here. So, so what were the signs? So there was none. Everything was here, and then all of a sudden, COVID, and then dump. Um. So now we're in panic mode. How does the world respond? Um, what was it like before that? Let's just look at the from a chart perspective. Turn this. Let's go back to go back to regular. So before that, which is here. So here's COVID dump. Um, you know, we're sort of ranging I guess you could maybe argue for you know is this like a bull flag slash falling wedge thing but you know it did break up and it looked good and so it was like the markets was you know looking like that they were bullish already and then COVID hit right so big bang and then there's like two weeks, oh, yeah, two weeks of like, I don't know what the hell's, maybe three weeks of, I don't know what's going on. And then all of a sudden, everybody around the world goes, right, we're shutting down, but we're going to print heaps of money. So at this time, everything's fine. And like, there's no inflation problems or anything because the world's fine because they haven't shut down. Now, now, in this period, we've shut down. And now everyone goes, we're going to start printing money because we are shutting down the economy of the world. So the smart people are going, holy shit, we're going to create inflation. So things are going to get more expensive. You, you know, you, your dollar purchasing power is going to get less. What do we do? Um, where do we park our money? So then, you know, traditional things like gold come up and then you got cryptos, right? So Bitcoin and that. So the smart people start buying up Bitcoin here and here and here and here. Uh, and then it starts just absolutely ramping. So as soon as we see, here's the top. This is the candle here from a TA perspective, right? So we had this, we had this little breakout, false breakout back down to support in this range and then this candle here was and we closed strong so then we launch we're done so to the question what are the warning signs that gave before the huge pump so the warning signs was you know the absolute launch definitely was because of this just so happens that it was on the on the 200 right that is the is the EMA right here um, so there would have been pure TA guys that would have just been buying here just because, right? Rock it up. Everything's fine. Um, and then there's a lot of crypto announcements and Elon candles and all that sort of stuff. And then there's a rounded top here with an SFP on the weekly. If we go to the daily, Right to here, if we go to the daily, here's the ultimate top, but you wouldn't have known that um, at the time. I actually remember, I remember writing something like a post that was like, this is, you know, we're not bearish yet technically because we're here. We could easily come back to here and then launch off, but we didn't. We ended up dying um and then what it did was create a lower high and then dump off it was the wrong time of the year as far as <clears throat> previous cycles you know everyone's talking about previous cycles so if it pulls back here it's not a big deal bitcoin traditionally peaks at the end of the year 
So we come to the end of the year in November and it peaks just a little bit higher than the last one. There's an SFP sort of at a high time frame here and then dumps off. So um, were the warning signs there? It's hard to say. There's definitely lots of bearish signals here, but the momentum was strong and, you know, the, everybody's going back to last cycles. So it, and it, sh and nobody should have been doing that, but that was the call from the majority of people. And that's what I was clinging to, right? Because I wanted to see a hundred K and I still do, and I still have Bitcoin, and I will be holding it to 100k at least. We're going to get there, but when? When is the question? So I don't know. Um, what's the question again? Maybe also look for the long term. I don't know. We did that. No. Oh, hindsight recap. Uh, the most recent SAP, well, that was three weeks ago, so, um, and they were in war, so I'll, I'll skip that one. Can you do a hindsight recap? Yeah, so I think I've answered the question. Um, yeah, it was all inflation. So now we've stopped, right? So here, the reason why, or well, one of the reasons, the macroeconomic reason why I went down, um, so the impetus to buy Bitcoin down here was because it will be an inflation hedge, right? So when... Now inflation is a problem and they're starting to fix it, then that means inflation will go down and it won't be a problem. Then you don't really need to have as much Bitcoin or gold or whatever. So people start reducing their positions. Um, but, it, you know, it's also following um, the stock market as well. Don't forget that. You, like the stock market was just going straight up. But if the stock market is sick, then so will Bitcoin be. Um, so we now we now need to be aware of what the stock market's doing. Unfortunately, yeah. so it looks like yeah, maybe I don't know. This is the next level though, because here's a touch here and. There's various touches through here, and there's another one there and here. So, what's that? Basically, 4,500. What will it do? It's above the EMAs, which I like. And they haven't crossed. If you zoom right in, they haven't crossed. So, still bullish trends if you ask the EMAs. Cool. Next question. Comments on the move. Interested in the psychology of gold versus Bitcoin. Gold seems to be setting up for a nice break. Potential thesis for market reaction with Ukraine versus Russia brewing. Bitcoin seems to be getting quite a lot of publicity over there. Uh, the psychology of gold and Bitcoin. Um, let's look at gold. What's happened to gold in the last three weeks? What's a good one? I don't really look at the gold chart that often, as you can tell. So the last three weeks, here's the weekly, so one, two, three. So gold took off basically the same as um, oil, and now it's come back same as oil. But just looking at the chart on its own, like let's ignore that it's gold, just from a TA, that, geez, gold looks really good. The question. Uh, in the, the psychology of gold versus Bitcoin. Yeah, the psychology of gold versus Bitcoin. I guess that really depends on the person that you're asking. Like somebody like me or you guys will know that gold is just fucking garbage to carry around in your wallet. And um, you can just mine more gold, more deposits of gold, right? Um, Bitcoin's fixed. Um, so, but all the traditional guys, all the hedge fund guys, you know, and the regulations and all the rules are still geared towards, you know, investment banks and whatever other fund is able to get their hands on it. But um, you can't, it's not as easy with, um, it's not as easy with crypto, right? They're only just starting to get better now. Um, 
people are having to do proxy trades like buying MicroStrategy or ARK Invest or something like that. But this gold setup, man, I didn't really look at it. Look at it. It's like, here's a level, here's the triangle. So we're breaking out now. And it could do that. What? What is... Where's the long... Oh, shit. <laughs> so there's the line that I drew in without even <coughs> without even looking this way. So I just drew it here because that's where the level looked to me. And now it's back in September 11th. September 2011. 11th of... Yeah. So like September 11th on, on 2011. So here. Huh. Wow. Okay. That's good. I like that. If you're interested in gold, <clears throat> sorry, if you're interested in gold, this is looking pretty good. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a safe haven in times of um, uncertainty. And we are in big uncertain times, right? War and COVID and inflation's high. Like, you know, what's the next disease that's going to come? What's the next variant, right? What's Putin going to do? What's NATO going to do? Like, oil has come back cheap. It's cheaper than it was. We just saw that on the chart. But the petrol price is still high. Like, yeah. No, like, it just doesn't make sense anymore, does it? Um, the, but this gold chart looks really good. Um, so, yeah, keep an eye on that question uh yeah we just did that one compare it uh i've talked about that s p 500 and crypto are correlated simple as that it seems to be that the s p is leading though right so if things are all good in the stock market then we go up um it's not like the other way like if bitcoin tanks the stock market doesn't tank it doesn't work like that at the moment um justin hey don't know if you're into DeFi and passive income in crypto come on uh but this is something that i am wanting to know i oh, now venture into in addition to what i'm already doing i'd love to hear over you what to look for what to watch out for any particular ones you use or recommend if you can provide any that would be fantastic okay the ones that i am using currently so the ones i'm using currently is curve uh, on Avalanche, so I have um, I have some money in this pool. Where is it? Where is it? Where's the other? Here it is. Here, it shifts around all the time um, on the list. Uh, so it's I'm getting seven. Like there's a base APY of two. And then I'm getting Avalanche Rewards, which is about five. So it's about seven. Uh, well, at least this week it's seven. Uh, so this one, you deposit stable coins in and then Curve goes and puts them into Aave. And then you also get the Avalanche Rewards. The other one, right, so the other one that I'm in uh, is Sunny on Solana. And I've talked about this before. This is because oh, this, Sunny and Sabre are like the convex and curve of uh, Solana. Um, so you put your uh, stable coins into Sabre or whatever pair it is that you're doing. So Sabre is a you know a like for like swapping place. So you know Sol to Sol and Bitcoin to Bitcoin. Luna to Luna, FTT to FTT, you get the idea. Um, and then when you get the LP tokens from Sabre, you put them into Sunny. And what Sunny does is mine the rewards on your behalf. They take a cut. They take 16% of the Sabre, but then they give you Sunny tokens as well. The end result is that the APY that you effectively get um, is higher than what you normally would if you just put them on Sabre. Um, there's a new a new one on Solana which you can 
you, instead of going from Sabre to Sony, you go from Sabre to Quarry, and it's similar rates. Um, but the APY is, I mean, this is this is Terra and USDC, and you get 14%. Um, so yeah, that's great for a stablecoin yield. Here's another one. This is zero at the moment. Last week it was about similar here, like about 15%. Um, why is it zero now? That's because uh, for whatever reason, uh, nobody voted for it. So Sabre, there's a vote on Sabre every week as to what pools get the rewards. Same with Sony, and nobody voted for USDC at and USDC. So this is the um, this pool is run by the wormhole guys. Um, yeah, it, it usually gets voted up pretty pretty good, but it didn't this time. Maybe they forgot or stopped or I don't know. So I mean, this value locked was way higher obviously and people just moved their money out and put it somewhere where that was getting a better yield so they've moved it into this cash one cash is a is a backed stable coin on solana it's backed with usdt usdc lp tokens so this cash is effectively usdc usdt and then it's paired with usdc so why would you not use this well the risk is that the the cash protocol might be dodgy, get hacked. The guys that run it just can't be bothered, and they shut it down, um, or everybody just leaves for some reason. So cash becomes worthless, and that applies to all of these pools, any pool on any chain, right? So just basic risks. Smart contract risks, bugs in the code, founders being dodgy, people just leaving because there's a better alternative uh, which devalues the governance token or whatever it is that you're getting. Um, uh, you know, the, ch the chain that it's on stuffs up or, you know, all of that is, um, yeah, they're just, they're just risks. There are more, but they're the main ones. Um, and they're big risks, but then you're also getting big reward, right? So, I mean, 14% in a bear market? Come on. That's crazy. And UST, like if you check that, you could be stacking this, I think. I haven't actually gone onto Anchor myself, but I know you can make, you know, 19, 20% just on Anchor. So if you're getting UST from there, then you can chuck it into a pool i mean ust terra and that's going multi-chain so they're all over the place ust is very popular um even though there are these you know people are calling it a ponzi and um whether that is or not um i'm not i'm not so sure like there's a lot of development I, an exchange i think it was just yesterday there's an exchange now that are using UST as a base currency for all their pairs. So there's basically like another 70 pairs, 70 markets now, and you can trade UST. So if you, instead of, you know, Bitcoin USDC, it's now Bitcoin UST. You know, it's getting used, which is the key to any sort of project staying alive, is that people got to use it. You can create great tech. And if no one uses it, it's going to die. It's like Betamax and... The Microsoft Zune player. The great tech, but if nobody uses it, it doesn't have any value. Um, that's what I'm using now. Sunny, Sabre on Solana, and I'm using Curve on Avalanche. Um, there's definitely better things out there in terms of APY. I'm yet to investigate them and weigh up the risks. I mean, this is good, so... It's good enough. Uh, uh, what are we doing here? Uh, I might take a look at the macro market. I think I've covered that already. Um, this guy thinks I look like Eric Banner. A few things. Um, update on DeFi stablecoin years. Well, I just did that. Um, maybe look at the notional finances. Uh, the notional finances fixed rates. They've only just 
if you're talking about the Fed and that, well, that's just gone up by 0.25 or 25 basis points. So looks rare wash trading. I don't really know about that one. So I will skip it. Curve Wars and Convex, well, both of those tokens are getting hammered because it's a bear market. Um, but the underlying principles of it all are still sound. Any thoughts on POK, POKT network? Never heard of that. Sorry, Ben, can't help you. Um, I'm not going to talk about something I don't know anything about. Um, sorry, I couldn't help. Um, ask somebody else. Uh, I think that will do. Uh, 45 minutes. I think that's enough prattling on. Here's gold. Let's look at Bitcoin quickly. So that's pumping into resistance though. S. S looks like it's trying to break out, but you know, again, into a resistance area. Ah, Solana looks like garbage. Um, but it's sideways, so that's okay. I, the avalanche, I had the magnet down here. I thought I was going to break down, back down to this area, but it's pumping again. So got that one wrong. But again, we're back at this resistance level. So does it come back and then do this? Uh, if, it, if it starts doing something like this, then you're long. I'm not sure why it recovers so hard. There's obviously some sort of FA that I'm missing. What's Matic doing? It's kind of eh. It's kind of eh. Uh, what's Polkadot doing? It's the same. It's kind of eh. Ada. It's just like a death. Here, this big red thing here. This is where I, I tweeted about the death cross on the daily. And it just got hammered after that. Came it just like lost the level and rejected it twice and then just fucking capitulated again. Um, so, uh, God, I wouldn't buy that. Not in a million years. Here's the level here. Jeez, if it doesn't, if it doesn't, I mean, see, the thing with ADA, it seems that like it follows the market, but all the bearish moves are way harder, way, may, way more severe. Um, what else can we look at quickly? What's Dodge doing? So even with Dodge too. Yeah, so here's the head and shoulders, and it's just been death after that. Um, yes, Nia, that's one of the ones I said to keep an eye on for Q1, and it's basically suffered the same fate as everything else. I really think, like, if you want to be trading right now, you just need to trade the things that have certainty. Or more certainty than, or maybe maybe saying less uncertainty. So just stick with the majors. That's my advice. If you if you know the fundamentals really well of some sort of like low level shit coin, um, like that ape one, where I was talking about it. Well, first I talked about it before it listed, and then I said you need to like watch it. And then after the initial shit off, it's just pump. So that would have been a good trade. <coughs> so here's why this was a good trade so let me just break this down so one everybody knows what everybody in the scene knows what the board apes are it's even in just general media like steph curry owns a board ape like famous people own one gets talked about all the time gets compared to the og king crypto punks <laughs> which I still don't like to this day, but I do like the art style of board apes. And I just, and I knew about them on the first day of mint and I just didn't buy one. I think well, they were probably like, like two grand or something, one grand to buy. Like I, you know, it minted during the night, so I couldn't have minted it. I didn't um, stay up for it or anything. But you know, in the preceding days, I could have bought one at floor price, but I never did. Oy, hindsight, eh? But, you know, would I... I don't know. I don't know that I would. Like, had I known that I was going to go to, like, half a million or something, whatever, per ape, of course it would. But even now, 
I'm looking at those apes and going, man, they're, they're just not worth three thousand dollars. It's just a picture of an ape. But what gives it what gives it its value is all the stuff that it has now, right? So the brand power and the celebrities, and then they've got this roadmap now. So they're going to make a game and all this other stuff. So that's where the value comes in, okay? And that didn't exist before. But the chart itself. Um, was good so you got the hype of the coin you got the hype the fact that they bought the punks out so they've created this entity now and then they gave all the ip rights to the people which was the right thing to do that's great so that basically means that say say you own an ape and then nike wants to use that ape in an ad you would get paid for it whereas previously lava labs that owned Oh no, not Lava Labs. Lava Labs own um, CryptoPunks. So let's say you had a CryptoPunk and Nike wanted to use it in an ad. The Lava Labs, you know, the corporate dudes, they would have got the money for it because they own the rights to it. You own the punk and you could sell it for whatever it's worth, but you didn't have the IP. Um, but now that the Bored Apes crew have bought the punks and this other one, MeBits. Um, and they said, yeah, anyone that has that owns the NFT also owns the rights to it, which I think is fantastic. So, yeah, if you own in one of those NFTs and somebody wants to use it in a, in a music video or some sort of marketing thing, you legally get, you need to get paid for that. Um, so there's all that hype too. So they launched the coin at the right time. Um, so obviously there's a whole bunch of people that were like, oh, I wish I bought an ape, but I can't afford an ape, right? But I can buy this token. It's like six bucks. Yeah. Um, so yes, there was an airdrop. So all the NFT people that got, uh, had the NFTs got airdropped this token. So this is why it dumped off initially because there would have been, you know, just, oh, it's an airdrop, I don't care, I'm going to sell it. Um, of course, the core group of, you know, diehard fans are going to keep some, but then most are just going to go, well, it's a bear market and I'm hurting and it's COVID and it's the war and I need money and I'm losing my job and inflation is this. So, yeah, I'm going to sell, right? Huge dump off. Then it settles down and then everybody that was, that was going to sell the airdrop has sold it already. So then we start seeing buyers take over. And then it's just gone up because, you know, they see the value in the project or the roadmap or whatever. There's people that want to own a punk that, or own a board ape but just can't afford it. So now they're, at least they feel part of the, of the culture. That's what's driving this here. Now, the longer this chart goes on, the less of that, it is, and then it just becomes more people that are just trading it. But initially, that's um, it's a lot cleaner, game theory-wise, anyway. Um, and then it becomes, you know, are they going to deliver on the roadmap? Here's that 200 EMA just reacts to it. it's now below it so who knows you might see a breakdown but yeah um i think i've prattled on long enough it's a big one which is probably not for an hour no 50 minutes uh i'll edit this down though and remove a few things ums and ahs uh so hopefully you got something from this uh and if you didn't i'm sorry for wasting your time um i'm gonna try and do more of these videos uh you know we can just do q a videos we can do chart videos but you know i want to get into the habit of doing more videos regularly maybe i do them every monday or you know once a week or something um because I need to get back into it. I need to get back to, you know, normality. I think the house is, it's set up. I'm not going to Bunnings every day. Um, 
you know, I have enough furniture. It just needs homey touches. Or it just needs decorating, I guess. Um, you know, I don't have any photos or pictures or paintings, like lamps. I don't. I've only just got some plants inside just to fill up the empty spaces where there's like nothing. Um, yeah, so we're getting there. You know, because those things are on your mind all the time and you can't, or at least I can't concentrate on work that I need to do if I know that there's something that I can just knock out real quick. So, like, you know, replacing a door handle, because all the door handles I replaced in the house, they were just horrible. They were ugly and they were old and it had this chrome stuff on it and it was just like chipping off and, and rusted and stuff. And I just... It felt gross just holding the handle, right? So that's a quick win. Like, handles aren't super expensive, but they are when you add up all the doors. That's the trick. You go to Bunnings, right? And you see this thing, oh, it's just 10 bucks. Oh, this is just five bucks. Oh, this is just 20 bucks. But the thing is, you walk out with like 20 or 30 things, and it's just, oh, fuck, I've spent hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Blinds. Uh, like these blinds that are behind me, which you probably can't tell because the camera's blurring it out, but there's blinds here. We're really cheap. They're, I think, like 90 bucks or 100 bucks or something. But the problem is, I needed like, <laughs> it's like four or five. It's not like there's more than one window in the house. Uh, anyway, but it's done. Okay. The office is still not set up, but, you know, it's just messy. I will get over it. We will press on. Um, right, that's it. Thank you for listening to me talking and ranting. And uh, if you got something from it, great. Uh, if you didn't, let me know what you want to hear. And always remember that, you know, go listen to somebody else because I'm just some random dude that lives on the Gold Coast, right? And I get it wrong. So... Yes, seek out other opinions, <laughs> right? Um, I'll see you guys soon. All right, cheers.